<laughs> Guess who forgot to put his clock forward last night? Guess who got out of bed one hour too late? Can you guess who it was? <laughs> I will give you a clue. <sighs> it was me. Hi, everybody. Here we go. Yes, we are here once again. It is English Addict live from the birthplace of the English language, which just happens to be England. Hmm. Can you guess who forgot last night to correct their clock? Now, one of the problems I find every year, I always find that this is a big problem. Every time they change the clocks forward for summer and then back for winter, sometimes I forget. And the other problem is some of the clocks in my house will correct themselves automatically. However, some clocks will not. They will not do that. So that is why I got up late. I was late and every time I looked at the clock, I thought I had an extra hour to get ready. But then after a while, I realised that some of the clocks in my house were not accurate. So that's the reason why I am slightly late. I'm ever so sorry. I haven't had a shave. I haven't got ready properly. So unfortunately, I am a little bit behind today, for which I apologise a lot. However, you can see now the time is, yes, it is coming up to half past two here in the UK. For those who are confused, last night here in the UK, we put our clocks forward by one hour. Because now this is the start of British summertime so that's the reason why the clocks are now one hour ahead the reason is because we have now entered british summertime and i know a lot of people around the world will also be putting their clocks one hour forward not everyone so some people do and some people don't which only makes things even more confusing to be honest so here we go oh my goodness how are you doing? This is Mr. Duncan, by the way, for those who don't know who I am. My name is Mr. Duncan. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Well, are you happy? I hope you are feeling happy today because I'm here with you live on YouTube on this Sunday afternoon here in the UK, or at least I think it's Sunday afternoon. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Shall we check? Is it Sunday? Can you please confirm that today is definitely Sunday? A day and yesterday I was telling everyone I was telling everyone yesterday to make sure that you don't forget to put your clocks forward if you are in the UK and also I told all of you yesterday to make sure that you are here earlier than normal because of the clocks going forward however <laughs> here in the house where I live it was complete chaos this morning because I didn't really know what time it was. Some of the clocks were saying that time and some of the clocks were saying this time. So I didn't know which clock was correct. So I did get rather confused and that is the reason why I am here with you a little later today for which I do apologise. I say sorry from the bottom of my heart. I do apologise. Did you see my live stream yesterday? 
i was with you for two hours sitting in my comfortable chair talking to you about all sorts of things <laughs> including including these did you see my live stream i was sitting talking to you and eating my lovely delicious jaffa cakes a lot of people asked mr duncan are you actually being sponsored by the people who make jaffa cakes no i'm not <laughs> although sometimes i wish i was to be honest it would be very nice hello to everyone on the live chat hello to vitas vitas guess what you are first on today's live chat <laughs> i must admit it feels very strange being back in the studio for the past few days i've been outside doing live streams from in the garden and around the area where i live however today i'm back in the studio things look a little bit no more normal so slightly more normal today whatever normal is can can you actually define normal at the moment i don't think there is any such thing as normal right now so yesterday we went into town and for those who are wondering what the town center looks like at the moment i will show you what everything looks like because this is something that i filmed yesterday so you can see now on the screen there it is so there is much wenlock yesterday and you can see down the road there are some people queuing outside one of the shops because people were not allowed to go in in large groups i think you know why <laughs> i think you know why that is happening however people are being told that they can't move around most of the shops are closed including here in much wenlock so there it is the view yesterday looking down the high street of the place in which i live not many people around the only people that were there yesterday were people who were buying things so these people were all buying stuff yesterday and here's another shot this is a view looking across the center of much wenlock i was standing in the square and i'm looking across at the bakery and you can see there are some people standing outside and they are all keeping a very safe distance from each other and you might be able to see one of the people standing there actually has a mask on his face can you see him he's actually wearing a mask and there is mr steve can you see steve hey mr steve what have you got in your shopping bag do you have something nice to eat i think so there is mr steve making sure that he keeps his distance from everyone except for those people working for the post office so there they are can you see them so there are a couple of people there talking to each other and they work for the royal mail who are the people who deliver all of our letters here in the uk i hope you are okay today so things here are strange i'm not going to pretend that everything is normal because we are not living through normal times things are weird a little bit strange don't you think well i think so anyway maybe where you are sitting you are making the best of this bad situation so some people are finding positive things to do one of the things i have noticed is many people are taking care of vulnerable and elderly people so those who cannot get outside those who can't move around easily are being taken care of by some very kind people including here in the area that i live so there are some volunteers who are helping those who can't get out or those who are unable to get out of the house for various reasons so yes it's very nice a lot of people are, are are getting together and helping those 
who cannot help themselves and I'm sure you have some positive stories as well to share so I would imagine you have some very nice stories that you can share as well hello to the live chat lots of people are here I'm back in the studio today however outside the weather doesn't look too bad outside today so there it is the view out of my studio window right now looking across the beautiful countryside here in Shropshire you can see there are lots of sheep in the field they are completely oblivious they are oblivious to what is going on so nature doesn't really realize it doesn't know what is happening only human beings know what is happening at the moment with the situation that in some places is really bad so can I first of all say hello to all those who are having a difficult time at the moment I am thinking of you and we are in a very similar situation here we all have to stay in our houses we can't go out unless it is absolutely necessary so there you can see the view looking across the fields it is very windy today so we do have a lot of harsh weather it is cold and windy however the sun has decided to come out which is rather nice so even though it's cold and in some parts of the UK can you believe can you believe in some parts of the UK they've had snow so in the north of England some people are actually experiencing snowfall and I do believe in certain parts of the world as well snow is falling I saw some beautiful images this morning from Japan so a few people living in Japan have been filming the snow falling outside their houses and it's beautiful so something to cheer us up something that looks lovely a little bit of snowfall however here unfortunately there is no snow sadly coming up at around about three o'clock we have mr steve yes mr steve is with us however he is in his little safe space corner so mr steve will be here a little bit later on there is where mr. Steve will be sitting later on so you can see the seat where mr. Steve will be sitting that is Steve's safe space corner so he won't be here in the studio I've had to put him in a safe place away from me so we can't breathe over each other so even we are keeping a safe distance from each other today so that's what we are doing later on on today's English addict so for those who are wondering I'm Duncan I teach English on YouTube I've been doing this for ever such a long time do you know how long I've been doing this for over 14 years can you believe it can you believe it hello to mr. Bruno hello mr. Bruno nice to see you here on the live chat lots of people joining me already hello Christina as well flower hello flower espoir hello mr. Duncan sorry I was in the kitchen preparing pizza I'm very intrigued to find out what type of pizza you are making so flour what pizza is it what type of pizza are you making maybe it has lots of cheese maybe it has some meat or maybe it has some vegetables I really don't know why people put pineapple on pizzas I really hate the taste of pineapple on pizzas I don't know why 
Su Jin. Hello, Su Jin. Nice to see you here today. Also, Luis Mendez. Hello to you. Welcome back. I must apologize for my. Can you see my beard is starting to come through because I didn't have a shave today. I got in a real mess, unfortunately, because some of the clocks in my house were telling me the wrong time. So some of the clocks changed automatically whilst others didn't. And sadly, I got myself into a little bit of confusion. Hello to Switzerland. In Switzerland, apparently it is going to snow tomorrow, apparently. Ooh. I wish we had a little bit of snow here where I live. So unfortunately, in this part of England, we haven't had any snow. However, in the north, they have had a lot of snow. Hello, also Palmyra. Hello to Palmyra. Nice to see you here today. Would you like to see a visitor in my garden? And this is the bird. I'm going to show you a particular bird that has been creating all sorts of chaos around this area, especially for me during my live streams. So here is the bird. And a lot of people have asked if they can have a look at the bird that often makes a very loud noise in my garden. So here it is. So this is the bird that often causes a lot of noise in my garden. And at this time of year, this particular bird is looking for some girlfriends. Ooh. So this particular bird is a pheasant pheasant and there are lots of pheasants around here now it does look as if this video has stopped playing I don't know why <laughs> that's rather annoying <laughs> let's see if that will work now come on we want to see the pheasant can we please see the pheasant ah there he is the pheasant is now moving because my video wasn't playing so there you can see the lovely pheasant in the back garden and he was sitting around and during my live streams, unfortunately, this particular bird was disturbing my concentration. So this is the bird that sometimes makes a terrible noise in my garden. At the moment, he is quiet. He is thinking. He is wondering where all the girl birds are. So at this time of year, the, the male pheasant is looking for <laughs> some some girlfriends. So not just one girlfriend. Pheasants like to have lots and lots of girlfriends. So sometimes Mother Nature can be a little naughty. Imagine if human beings did that. Oh, look, he's having a little clean. Hello, Mr. Pheasant. How are you today? Are you OK? So there it is, the bird that often causes chaos, noise and lots of problems in my garden. There is the pheasant. Bye bye, Mr. Pheasant. Bye bye. Ting says, I have never seen snow ever. That's incredible. If you've never experienced snow, all I can say is it is the most amazing feeling in the world. It really is the most amazing feeling in the world. In fact, I might try to find one of my lessons because I did do an English lesson that was all about snow. So I might actually try to find one of my snow lessons because I did do a lesson all about snow a while back. So we might have a look at that a little bit later on if I can find it. Today we are playing a little game, a game that I call the awe game. And what I 
am planning to do here today I am planning to give you choices between different things so I will show you choices and what you have to do is tell me which one you prefer so when we talk about preferring something we are saying what your preference is so the thing that you like more than the other thing is your preference so we often talk about preferences when we are choosing the thing we like the most the thing that we like above everything else is the preference so what I'm going to do I'm going to give you two choices and what you have to do is tell me on the live chat which one you prefer I prefer that I prefer that so I will give you some choices I will give you a, an example so here is an example a very quick example this one so there is a good example of making a preference so you might choose one thing or the other so that's something we are going to do in a little while when Mr Steve joins us on the live chat and yes he will be with us he will be with us very soon Christina nice to see you here Christina hello also to Irene Fung hello Fung Du Chung I believe you are watching in Vietnam hello also to Da Judex Jadudech microbiologist happy Sunday Mr Duncan I guess Mr Duncan and Mr Steve are faring well I actually live in France and France is one hour ahead of the UK so you didn't start at the usual time yes this is really confusing let me just explain so at the moment in the UK it is coming up to 10 minutes to three o'clock but really it should be 10 minutes before two o'clock however last night we put the clock forward by one hour so we went forward by one hour last night so that's what happened so now the time actually is nearly 10 to 3 and every year this causes a lot of confusion for many people so I thought I had an extra hour this morning but I didn't because I let I kept looking at the clocks in the house and they weren't right they were incorrect so I got myself into a real state a real state of confusion hello Omar hello also uni Karina nice to see you here as well also we have Palmyra and oh hello to Mirella Mirella nice to see you here I did apologize for being late but Mirella says it doesn't matter Mr Duncan it doesn't matter if you are late nothing is normal at the moment have you noticed nothing is normal at the moment everything is very strange hello Andrea hello Saturino hello to all of the friends hello also lolly lolly wow so many people are on the live chat Beatrice also Larissa Larissa it is nice to see you today so yesterday some of the people who live around here were going into town to buy their food and can I just say that most of the supermarkets here have quite a lot of stock so they haven't really run out of food so yesterday we went into town we bought some milk and the local supermarket had loads of milk lots and lots of milk so we didn't have to worry about that however we did have to go to the bread shop and they had a lot of bread but we normally order our bread so we have always done this even before this current situation we've always ordered 
our bread so we always have our bread reserved every Saturday although this week we did order a little bit extra so this week we ordered a little extra bread and of course one of the wonderful things about bread is you can put it in the freezer so one of the reasons why I love bread is because you can freeze it you can freeze bread so I love that it makes everything very convenient hello Tatiana hello Mr Duncan we like your nice cool tie oh thank you very much so I'm wearing my normal clothes that I normally wear during my English addict live stream where did you find your Jaffa cakes here it is very difficult to find those cakes well it's quite strange really because Jaffa cakes are biscuits however they, they look like cakes but they are technically technically they are biscuits <laughs> hello to autodontai hello to you autodontai are you a dentist by any chance you don't happen to be a dentist do you because your name sounds like you might be a dentist I am at the end of my tether with Mr Duncan always being late hi there I am glad to see you hi Tom Eck. I was in a real mess a terrible mess this morning because some of the clocks in my house were telling me the wrong time so I thought I had an extra hour but in fact I didn't so there you go sometimes these things happen I have seen your live stream from yesterday and I got very hungry but I didn't have any Jaffa cakes at home so I opened a packet of Oreos my favorite biscuits Wow can I tell you one of my favorite biscuits besides Jaffa cakes are Oreo biscuits I do like Oreo biscuits especially mint Oreo have you seen them so they have lots of different flavors of Oreo biscuits they have the traditional vanilla they have also the peanut butter which I don't like and also they have the mint Oreos oh and I always like to have an Oreo biscuit and a glass of milk because I think they go together very well so yes Mr Bruno I also like Oreo biscuits especially the mint ones very nice the town looks very empty says Hacklau it was very empty so if you go to many towns and many cities around the UK at the moment you will find that they are all deserted they are empty they are desolate there are no people walking around so even places like London there are not many people walking around most of the big streets in the capital city are empty there are no people walking around at all it is a very strange period of time hello also to hello Marwa hello to you as well nice to see you here a lot of people joining in don't forget as I always say I know I say this every day but don't forget you are not alone during this period of time because I am doing the same thing I am also having to keep myself safe and isolated talking of which Mr Steve will be joining me soon and he will be in isolation as well he will be next door I will show you what is happening <laughs> with Mr Steve so this is where Mr Steve will be he will be sitting in his safe space corner so that's where Mr Steve will be in a few minutes time however before then I have something that I want to show you do you remember those lovely hot days when we could go outside and relax and enjoy the sunshine well just to cheer you up 
just to give you something nice to look at here is one of my full English lessons and in this lesson we talk all about keeping cool and relaxing on a hot sunny day Can you see what sort of day it is here? Today is a hot day. It is a midsummer's day. This seasonal period is when the days are at their longest and quite often their hottest. A hot day can be described in many ways. It's a scorching day. It's scorching hot today. It's a sweltering day. To swelter is to feel uncomfortably hot. It's baking hot today. It's burning hot. This sort of weather makes me feel all sweaty and sticky. If you stay out in the sun too long, you will burn. Your skin will turn red from the sun's ultraviolet radiation. Too much exposure to harsh sunlight will literally burn your skin, which can lead to serious health issues later. Ironically, exposure to UV light is necessary for the production of vitamin D2 in the human body. So, a hot day like this can be described as hot, scorching, sweltering, dry, baking. The extreme heat is overwhelming, oppressive, harsh and unbearable. Oh my goodness, I'm so thirsty. I feel parched. I'm gasping for water. To refresh yourself by drinking something cold is to quench your thirst. Your thirst is the need and the drink is what will satisfy that thirst. We can also use the word thirst to show the desire to do something or to obtain something beneficial. You can have a thirst for knowledge, a thirst for social interaction. We can also use the need for food, hunger, as an idiom for want and desire. I hunger for your soft embrace. I'm hungry for success. Both hunger and thirst are often feelings that need to be satisfied. <sighs> That's better. There can be no doubting just how hot it is today. It is so hard to escape the heat. By the way, the word heat can relate to other things besides temperature. We can use heat as an idiom for danger or trouble. Let's wait here until the heat has died down. To feel the heat means to be aware of possible dangers or an approaching situation that might cause you trouble. We can say that the heat is on, which means that a tough situation is happening. Then there is things are really heating up now. This means that there is tension and maybe a sense of excitement in the air. To be in hot water means to be in serious trouble. Then there is a heat, which is a round in a contest or competition. A part of a contest can be called a heat. Congratulations, Mr. Duncan. You are through to the next heat.
Ah, this is a much better place to be standing. If you want to escape the harsh sunshine, then you will need to find a nice shady place in which to hide from those nasty UV rays. You need to shade yourself from the sun whenever possible. A shady spot gives you relief from the sunshine and the heat. The word shady can also mean suspicious or untrustworthy. We can describe a person we don't trust as being shady. A shady character is a person who should not be trusted. A shady deal is an exchange or business deal that is being dishonestly carried out. There are many ways to keep yourself cool on a hot day. A quick way of doing this is to use one of these. This is an electric fan. A set of blades rotate to produce a flow of refreshing air. Very nice when you need to feel cooler without making much effort. A fan can also be something you use to cool yourself off with by waving it whilst holding it in your hand. Any large flat object can be used as a fan, such as a piece of cardboard or a magazine, or even one of Mr. Duncan's old flip-flops. On second thoughts, I think I'll stick with the electric fan. It's much less effort. Black shoes and socks with shorts. Oh, what a fashion faux pas. They appear so odd together when looked at from afar. Shorts with black shoes and socks should never ever be seen. Even if you squint, the sight is still quite obscene. Black shoes and socks with shorts. Please be off and make it quick. As those black shoes, socks with shorts are making me feel quite sick. Sadly, that is all I have time for today. Yes, another full English lesson has come to an end. Don't worry though, because I will see you very soon for full English number 14. Yes, it's true. This is Mr Duncan in a hot and sweltering England, which just happens to be the birthplace of the English language, saying to you, thanks a lot for watching me, teaching you. And of course, until next time, ta ta for now. Yep, yep, yep. I hope you enjoyed that. Something to cheer us all up during this strange period of time. A look at one of my full English lessons where I was enjoying the lovely sunshine. Mm -mm 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 -mm.
Hello. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan. For those who have never seen me before on the Internet, <laughs> you have been very lucky, by the way, to escape me for all these years. I teach English on YouTube and this is what I'm doing right now, talking about the English language, even though we are going through a very strange period of time. However, I would like to show you some nice things to help us enjoy. Well, many of the things that exist around us that we tend to take for granted. So I would say that walking outside and enjoying a nice peaceful stroll across the hills or maybe through your local town centre is something we take for granted. We just imagine that we can do it all the time and it will always be there. However, sometimes things come along and they change the situation. They change all of the circumstances. So we might ask someone to look on the bright side, look on the bright side of what is happening around you, even though things are not positive, even though sometimes things don't go the way you expected. You can look on the bright side of life. Always try your best to stay positive. Also, we can make the best of a bad deal. You can make the best of a situation that might be hard or difficult to get through. However, you can always find something positive that might make things better during a bad time. If you are stuck at home, well, maybe you can do something on your computer. Maybe you can get in touch with some of your friends and you can have a chat, a social chat through Facebook. Or maybe you can give them a telephone call. Yes. <laughs> we can still call people on the telephone. So even though things are bad, there are ways of keeping ourselves busy. Every cloud has a silver lining. Remember, things always have a positive side. If you are spending time at home with your family, well, maybe you can actually sit down and have conversations and talk about things. Because in our busy lives, quite often, we don't have enough time to actually sit down and have conversations with each other. Would you agree with me? Do you do you think that we don't have enough time together these days? We always seem so busy. So maybe you could say that every cloud has a silver lining. Perhaps there is something good that can come from this situation and oh I love this one there is light at the end of the tunnel there is always a glimmer in the distance there is always a glimmer of light in the distance ahead as we look into the future there is light at the end of the tunnel even though sometimes it might not appear to be the case however there is light at the end of the tunnel. And of course, you are not alone. I am doing the same thing as you. Another person who is doing the same thing as me <laughs> is the guy who is about to appear on your screen. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <laughs> please put your hands together for the one and only Mr. Steve. Hello. Hello, Mr. Duncan. And hello to everybody out there in the world wide web of English. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Duncan? I'm OK. Thank you very much. Now, before we started doing this today, Mr. Steve always likes to come into the studio to make sure his microphone is loud enough. And he always says, this is how long, this is how loud I'm going to speak. But <laughs> he always ends up speaking much louder. Well, I, I'll whisper, Mr. Duncan, I'll whisper. I think that's whisper. a very, I think that's a very good idea. So, so now you should be able to see yourself. Can you see yourself, Steve? I can. I must admit, even though I'm in self-isolation, or should I say Mr. Duncan's enforced 
me into self-isolation. True. Um, then you really have up to the tech in front of me, because last week I didn't know what was going on, Mr Duncan. But <laughs> this week I can see myself and I can see what uh, the output as we say, so I can see what's going out. I can see you. Oh, it all looks very interesting, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> safe, safe space corner. Yeah. A safe space corner. That's difficult to pronounce quickly. So at the moment, Mr. Steve is in his little safe space away from harm because I might be causing harm to Steve and Steve might be doing the opposite to me, in but fact. In and fact, not that, just in terms of the virus. Yes, in fact, that's what he <laughs> that's what he normally does. Now you've had a busy morning, Steve. Yes. Shall shall we take a look at what Mr. Steve is doing this morning? Steve has been Steve has been very busy in the garden. So take a look at this. Here is Steve being very busy this morning. What exactly are you doing there, Steve? Well, that uh, that little bush there that I'm uh, cutting down I don't know how much of that you've uh, you've uh, filmed but I am cutting that whole bush down whole thing. yes because uh, it is growing out of the wall itself hmm. the roots of it yes. are just about where my waistline is uh, the the trunk of that bush is uh, growing right out of the wall yes and uh, i quite liked it at first i thought this is a this is a it's got some interesting leaves i'm trying to think of the name of it now okay um Good. It, it may come to me in, in a minute <laughs> uh, but it's going to eventually cause a lot of damage to the wall so i've decided that it's time for that bush to go uh because there is another bush behind it so we will be our privacy will be uh, maintained. OK, don't give too uh, many details away. <laughs> against the walkers. Uh, don't worry, Mr Duncan, I won't. Uh, so, yes, that whole bush is going to go. It's a U, Y-E-W. It's a U tree. Oh, I see. A U tree. A U tree, which like, is an evergreen tree. Like Operation U tree. <laughs> yes, but somewhat different. <laughs> U, Y-E-W. So it's a... It's a fairly common tree. It's a slow growing tree that would eventually reach a great height. So I'm getting rid of it now. But it's got, I like the leaves of yew trees. OK. Uh, they're quite often seen in cemeteries and some of them <laughs> get, are well over a thousand years old. They live for a very long time. So it's gone. Can you see the root there? The base of that root is growing out of the wall. Yes, that's very unusual, Steve. The, the actual tree is not growing from the ground. Is that, It's actually growing from the wall itself. Because I would imagine what happened was a, a, a little bird uh, ate the seeds from uh, a yew tree somewhere because they have these, these quite distinctive red fruits um, and then they have seeds. And I would imagine that a bird uh feasted on a yew tree somewhere and then came into our garden had a little poop okay and out came the seeds out of its bottom <laughs> uh right in that spot there and uh and uh, the the yew tree germinated the seed germinated and there we have a a little yew tree but the trunk was about that thick okay coming out of the wall well it was starting to destroy the wall so time for it to go yes and it looks a lot brighter in that corner now mm. well, mr duncan people, you don't people. like me chopping down any trees do your bushes or anything mr duncan he hates it when i do any pruning around the garden because he thinks i'm somehow we're going to lose our privacy or well, he doesn't doesn't like it it's not just that i don't like to see lovely trees being cut down and a lot of people on the live chat are saying the same thing steve well they are also saying it looks so sad that you are chopping that bush down i know but it's okay in the wild to have bushes and trees growing however you like but when it's in your garden you have to have some practicality about things because if i just let that grow it would grow to about a hundred foot high and it would be very oppressive so you when it's your own garden you have to sometimes take harsh measures in order to uh, 
in order to to have a garden that actually looks neat and tidy mm. in the wild you, you know let let nature grow wild and we've got a lot of trees and bushes in our garden i don't like to cut it down but if i left it it would eventually become too big and then uh, i would have to call a professional out to yeah. get rid of it it would destroy the wall so you have to take practical measures when it's your uh, when it's your uh, garden it's like yeah. it's like growing um conifer trees as hedges you have to keep them under control otherwise they annoy the neighbors and and uh, suck up all the moisture from the ground and just become oppressive so yes. unfortunately needs must sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind yes i know that one <laughs> but well it's, actually i do agree with you steve the thing i do agree with you on is the fact that that bush was starting to damage the wall so yes. to be honest with you i do kind of agree with it however i still feel a little bit sad when i see a living plant or tree being chopped down i, I always feel slightly sad it's almost as if I'm, I'm seeing it being killed. I know. Well, that's how I felt. Every branch I chopped off, I thought, oh, I'm, you know, is this plant feeling the pain? Uh, <laughs> but I don't like to do it. But if I left it, then we'd have a bigger problem on our hands in a few years' time. We would yes. have to go eventually. Yes. You can't have a tree growing out of a, a wall. Anyway. Uh, unfortunately. Anyway, Steve, enough of that. We've got lots of things to talk about. We've got our little game today, by the way. You don't know about this game, do you? Because I haven't told you yet. We are playing the or game. Or? Or. O R. Oh, or, not and A W. <laughs> no. Well, what would that be? We're in or. Oh, I see. <laughs> Yes, that, that sounds the same. If you're in awe of something, it means you think it's wonderful. You just can't believe what you're seeing. Wow. Uh, perhaps people are in awe of you, Mr. Duncan. I don't think so. Your ability to, to carry on doing these lessons nope. two hours a day, nope. day after day after day. Nope. I don't think so. So we're playing the awe game. I will give you a clue, Steve, to what it is. So there you can see one. Tea or coffee, you see? Your so coffee. what you're doing is you are making your preference so the, so the thing you prefer so what about you steve we will start with you tea or coffee i prefer tea in the morning and coffee at mid-morning okay so a cup of so i like both uh so are you saying i've got to choose hmm. one or the other that is kind of the point of the game. Oh, in that case, I would choose tea. Ah. If I had to lose one, I would I would keep tea because coffee, I can only take really one cup a day or at the most because you begin to, it makes your breath smell and uh, you, coffee is too much caffeine. It makes you a bit on edge. Yes. Uh, but I do like one around 11 o'clock, 11.30 mm. because it just perks me up. Yes. makes me feel a bit brighter a bit more alive you could have just uh, said tea <laughs> well i you know me mr duncan i have to give vast long explanations for everything that i say and do that is true so tea or coffee what about out there in youtube land oh yes. what do so you what about prefer? you what, i think uh, most most people mr duncan would like both am i talking over you yeah, well, well it, it's <laughs> sometimes I have to say things and sometimes you can say things. So we are playing. You've been talking all week, Mr. Duncan. It's my turn now. <laughs> yes, I have. I've been doing lessons every day. I've been doing live lessons for 10, no, 11 days without stopping. So today, tea. give yourself a clap, Mr. Duncan. Give tea. yourself a clap. 11 days of constant teaching English to the world okay that deserves a clap I've given you a clap Mr Duncan not, not the clap not the clap a clap yes please don't <laughs> please don't give me the clap there's no chance of that Mr Duncan not again anyway <laughs> so here we go here we go tea or coffee what about out there in YouTube land now can you see the live chat Steve I can good <laughs> thank goodness for that or else this, this would be a very short live stream. So what about you out there in YouTube land? Tea or coffee? I'm we, going to we, add up. 
Oh, coffee at eight and two, tea at five. You see a lot of people, that's Maria. Hello, Maria. She, uh, most people would uh, do mix those during the day. Yes. Some people have tea, some people have coffee. Okay. And I think tea feels good around five o'clock. I would agree with that. And for me in the morning, uh, and then coffee, mate. But some people like coffee, don't they, to wake them up in the morning. Particularly uh, in most countries, I think. Uh, lots of countries, certainly in America, places like that. They all w- Everybody wakes up with a cup of coffee. Mm. This is what we always see on the television, yes. on the programmes. Everybody, as soon as they get up, they grab for the coffee. Yeah. Because it gives, gives you a bit of a, a, a boost. Or in my caffeine. case... Or in my case, I, I, I grab the vodka <laughs> first thing in the morning. Tea, of course, also contains caffeine, so it has a similar effect. Mm. Uh, but I think tea's more refreshing. If yes. you if you have too much tea or coffee, you can taste it all the time, I find. If you have too many, mm. how many teas and coffees do you have a day, Mr Duncan? Well, I have normally two cups of tea and quite often one cup of coffee. I normally have a cup of coffee just before I start my live stream. So I always like yes. to have something to get me going, to excite me, to get my body all ooh, anticipating this live stream. So, so I always like to get myself in a little bit of a, an excited mood. And I find that coffee really does help. So tea or coffee out there in YouTube land. What about you out there? Tea or coffee? Which one do you prefer so what is your preference tea or coffee some people are saying of course that they don't want either they want uh, for example um, somebody said there that they uh, they prefer just juice Lena ah. says that she just prefers uh, to have juice and some people have said made the distinction between green tea and ordinary uh, black tea that we <laughs> That is the popular one that we have here in this country. OK, this is this is making my game very complicated, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to have a whiteboard with a list of things. You have to choose just the two because I have lots here. So this is just an example. This isn't the whole stream. We're not doing the, the whole live stream talking about tea and coffee. We have a load more here. OK, so tea or coffee. What about out there? Francesca says yesterday has been fantastic with the live stream i liked it a lot yes i was on youtube yesterday for two hours steve talking about nothing i could see apart from jaffa cakes this is true i was eating my lovely jaffa cakes although sadly this particular box is now empty you see there are there are sadly no jaffa cakes in this box it is empty well mr duncan a few people were uh, correctly mentioning that uh, I might uh, be a bit angry with you. Really? For, for eating all those Jaffa cakes yesterday. And of course, I did berate you, did I not? You did give me... I you, berated you, you. You were slightly annoyed because you did find out because Steve found the empty box. He always looks around my studio. Yes, I'm always looking. And he found... He found my empty box that used to have Jaffa cakes inside. But now it is empty. There is nothing inside the box whatsoever. Very bad for you, Mr Duncan. All that sugar and mm-hmm. fat. Actually, Jaffa cakes are low in fat, mm-hmm. but they're very high in sugar. Well, that's fair. Uh, and, uh, well, mm-hmm. you know, my, you don't want to be diabetic, Mr Duncan, particularly mm-hmm. at the moment. With mm-hmm. this uh, mm-hmm. out and about everywhere no 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 so it's yes a... please feel free viewers to uh, tell mr duncan that uh, it's very bad for his health to mm-hmm. keep consuming large quantities of biscuits oh uh, but the other thing um, ah the other thing mr duncan likes to eat and not only did he eat a whole packet of jaffa cakes yesterday yeah but there was something else was there not mr duncan that you consumed there was Yes, go a on. Packet then. of Oreos. Yes, we mentioned Oreos earlier, uh, yes. but but they they weren't normal Oreos. They were special mint Oreos. You do so like So I mint. love Oreos, but especially the mint ones. Ooh. Yes, but two packets of biscuits in a day. 
Not good, Mr. Duncan, and I'll I, have to take you for a walk. I was just feeling a little stressed yesterday. So that's why I did my lovely long live stream sitting in my comfortable chair, feeling all relaxed. And I did enjoy my two hours with you yesterday. <laughs> two <laughs> hours. People are standing up for you. Anna says, I haven't seen anything. Mr. Duncan is innocent. Ah, thank you, Anna. Mr. Duncan says Lewis. Hello, Lewis. Uh, says Mr. Duncan told us not to say anything to Mr. Steve. Well, I found out anyway because I saw the empty packet and also I watched some of Mr. Duncan's live stream so I knew what he was doing anyway. See, you can't do a live stream to the world and expect <laughs> people, me, not to find out what you're doing, Mr. Duncan. I uh, must so, admit... But I, anyway, I it's was, up to you. Yes, I was a little bit careless by telling everyone on the live stream because I didn't think that Mr. Steve might be watching me upstairs on his computer. So that's it. I will have to be much more careful in the future of the things I say. Here Tom on the everyone's standing up for you. Tomek is saying, give him a break, Mr. Steve. The man needs his biscuits. I do. I need my sustenance. I need my energy. <laughs> and, and there is no better way of getting energy into your body than some lovely Jaffa cakes by oh. the way if the people who make Jaffa cakes are watching could you please send me a big box of Jaffa cakes to my house thank you very much you can no, just leave don't. it you can just leave it at the bottom of the driveway you don't have to come all the way up my driveway you can just leave them at the bottom of the driveway and then I will walk down and get them okay along with a big supply of insulin <laughs> God, Steve you you really do take the fun out of everything. Yes, Christina, you are right. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, mo a moderation, I think, is the key. But then I'm a bit boring. So uh, <laughs> I suppose if you want to consume, it's your life, Mr. Duncan, your yes. body. Thank you. Then if you want to consume two packets of biscuits in a day, then I guess it's up to you. Yes. Although I don't want to have to step around your large waistline uh, in a few years time. <laughs> I, I can assure you, Steve, if there's one thing that's not going to happen, I'm not going to put on weight. So don't worry about Why that. Why is that? Well, look at me. I look lovely today, even though I haven't had a shave. I'm looking rather I think I look rather macho today because I've got my my lovely designer stubble. Look at that. Well, there's a reason why you didn't have time to shave. It is true. It is true. And have you told your viewers why? I have. All oh, right. Okay. I mentioned that <laughs> last night, last night, all of the clocks went forward by one hour. However, I didn't change all of the clocks in the house. So some of the clocks here in the house were telling the wrong time. So I thought I had more time than I did. So I kept thinking, oh, I've only got I've got two hours. I've got two hours before my live stream. But then suddenly I realised I only had one hour. So I had to really rush around. And that's the reason why I was late today. I was late on the live stream because of <laughs> the stupid clocks. <laughs> Everyone's standing up for you. Anna, Anna Picker, Anna Pisa. Uh, I think you have a mouse in your house eating your biscuits. Mm. Mr. Duncan is innocent. <laughs> Mr. Steve often refers to me as a bit of a, a rodent. <laughs> I am like a little rodent. I'm always I'm always scurrying around the kitchen trying to find something to nibble on. <laughs> Irene Apraxine. Now, that's an interesting name because mm -hmm. I'm sure Apraxine is a name of a drug. Is it? Yes. So uh, you've got a very interesting surname there. I'm sure I've heard uh, if somebody could look that up. A praxine, it sounds like something, you know, that you'd be given for a medical condition. Mm. Uh, so interesting. You could be your, your surname, I think, is uh, similar to uh, a pharmaceutical drug that's used for treating mm. something. But what it's treated for, what it's used to treat, I don't know. But maybe somebody could look it up. That reminds <laughs> me of my friend from school, Penelope Penicillin. And her second name was Penicillin. Very unusual surname. You're joking. Oh, that was a joke. Say it again, Mr. Duncan, for those of us who are a bit slow, me included. <laughs> I said, I will try this again. <laughs> I, 
I said I used to have a friend at school called Penny Penicillin that's it really that's 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 my joke that's my funny joke did you enjoy <laughs> it uh, yes two pieces of biscuit with your coffee <laughs> is what Mika likes to have I it's, it's funny actually I like to have three for some reason th I think three is my lucky number mm. so whenever I have biscuits I always like to have three of them because I think it's lucky really <laughs> I don't know why well, my, well fortunately my my lucky number is 50. <laughs> yeah, well it's at least 10 because <laughs> I think that there's at least 10 in a packet of Jaffa cakes there is they oh, used, they're not Mr Duncan they I used to think be, I saw 10 yes there the used side. yeah okay Steve get, just just end the sentence please <laughs> there used to be 12. oh I see you're being ripped off yes there used to be 12 Jaffa cakes and then the people that make Jaffa cakes I can't remember who makes them McVitie's that's it it's McVitie's they make Jaffa cakes Steve and they used to put 12 in the box but then they cut them down to 10. Cap Devi 2 says that it seems you don't treat Mr Steve as well as he deserves he's always cooking working gardening you name it I'm always doing something yeah but I, uh, I do things for Mr Steve I have to wash his filthy dirty disgusting underwear that's true sometimes I have to get really you know close to it to, to get all those stubborn stains from his gusset <laughs> he's exaggerating <laughs> only slightly oh so what's next Mr Duncan what's next well we are talking about things that we can prefer so I'm giving you things that you can have a preference so when you have tea or coffee Mr Steve there are things that you put in your tea and coffee however you might say sugar or no sugar <laughs> okay there sugar is a, there, or no sugar what in tea or in coffee or in both, both? either so do I are you asking me Mr Duncan yes so no sugar in tea for me okay but I do like half a teaspoon of sugar in coffee so tea for me I gave up sugar in tea many years ago when I was a teenager uh, and uh, if I had sugar in tea now it would taste horrible mm. But for some reason, I cannot give up sugar in coffee because for me, I just like a little bit of sweetness with the coffee because it's quite bitter anyway, coffee. Yes. And uh, I just like a little bit, just half a teaspoon, because otherwise it tastes, I don't like the taste of coffee without sugar. So mm. none in tea, but I do like sugar in coffee. OK. So and well, we know. What about you, Mr. Duncan? I just have sugar in everything. <laughs> exactly. Even water. Three teaspoons in everything. You give me a glass of water, I'll put sugar in it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a story actually. When I was younger, mm -hmm. are you interested? Yes. Okay. Uh, was, was this was this biblical times? It was about uh, it was about a story about my mother and my grandmother. Okay. Uh, my mother tells me and has told me you know what mothers are like they tell you the same stories over and over again your your mum especially <laughs> so I know for a fact that when I was when I was a baby my grandmother used to like to feed me milk with sugar in it and my mother used to get quite annoyed about this because she said if you give your if you give my son uh sugar in his milk now he'll develop a sweet tooth it'll be bad for him okay and of course she was right because I did develop a sweet tooth uh, but yeah so I think I don't know whether that was common back in the 60s 1960s to give uh, put milk uh, sugar in milk to feed babies I'm not on about breast milk of course I'm on about uh, I don't know. how about would you do that perhaps a bit older than how that. would you how would you put sugar in breast milk I don't know well I'm just getting to wonder now about the story <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 well most of your mother's stories sometimes you know go nowhere a praxine is is a russian name so thank you for telling us tell, telling us about that okay oh i see so it might it might be a russian drug 
I don't know, but I'm sure there is a pharmaceutical product with that same name. Oh. Uh, so please look it up, somebody. Yes, it does, actually. It does actually sound a little bit like um, something that might be might be real or true because it does sound like a type of medicine, like my friend Penny Penicillin, who I used to go to school with. I definitely did. <laughs> Serene Snow says, um, describes your eating as nervous eating and it's going to make you sick. I think that's a very good suggestion, actually, a very good thought. Yes, well, sometimes I do like eating food. Uh, and uh, I've admitted this in the past. Sometimes I do like to give myself a little bit of comfort. But I think everyone does it from time to time. Not always, but sometimes maybe you feel, hmm, Mm, I want something to eat or it maybe is... you feel a little bit down or unhappy and, and sometimes a little bit of chocolate or something nice to eat can, can make you feel better yes because particularly at the moment everyone's a bit uh, unnerved about mm. uh, the current situation definitely and we hadn't been out all week we've been following uh, the government's advice well, it's, it's more like uh, it's not really advice anymore. It's moved from advice to uh, orders, hasn't it now, really, in this country? Yes, it's um, gone. Yes, it's not advice anymore. It says you shall not. You shall not do it. We, it's not advice now. It's you must do it. Mm. Uh, so we haven't been out because we haven't needed to, really. You've been very busy. I've been busy with work, working from home. So it's seven days since we actually went out out of the house and into town and when we did yesterday it was a very unnerving experience so um people were visibly avoiding each other they were it's the first time i've experienced standing in a queue where we had to keep that at minimum two meters distance yes the town was virtually deserted anyway yes so and i were... felt that every people were wearing masks which we've never seen yes you're never now thought, looking at steve know, people steve, in, steve, in the uk steve, steve stop well i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> when, when you start talking you don't you don't ever use full stops <laughs> well, I only, get, I only get a chance to talk once a week. So this is it, Steve. Look, we are now looking in the town centre and you can see there are people standing outside the shop, but they are keeping a safe distance from each other. They're queuing there to go into the bread shop. And there's you. And there's me. Well, I just I just went straight in there and, and, and there were people in there. So I, I completely ignored the advice. Uh, because I didn't realise that because we haven't been out, we didn't realise that we had to keep this distance. What? You, uh, you what? <laughs> haven't you read the news? I know, but then when you go out, <laughs> you, you might read it, but then when you actually go out, you don't suddenly. It's it's a bit of a shock, and so, you have to suddenly adapt. So the fact that the town centre was was completely empty and Deserted. everyone was and everyone was wearing masks, you 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 forgot all about it. Yeah, so I just went straight into the shop and I got some <laughs> strange looks. Well, well, I was waiting in the queue for the um, to go and buy some meat uh, because I thought because we can't go to the uh, our usual uh, tea shop for our our meal that we always have on a on on a Saturday lunchtime mm -hmm. because all the restaurants are shut. Yes. Then I thought, well, I will make my own. Uh, shepherd's pie which is mince mince meat with potato on top yes uh, so i thought i'll go to the, the the butchers and buy some mince and make it for mr duncan uh and there were big queues and mr duncan uh went off to do some filming and when he came back he he went quite close to the lady in front of me in the queue who was about three meters away from me okay and she really gave mr duncan a dirty look as much as say, how dare you come that close to me? You do realise that when I walk past anyone, they give me a dirty look. They True. always look slightly disgusted. And she had a child with her and she sort of sheltered her, protected her child as though you were uh, covered in virus oh. or something. <laughs> I wonder what you're going to say then. Quite, her reaction was really, you know, and that suddenly brought it home to me. Uh, the reality now uh, of the, the the world we're living in now. It is. It's a strange uh, place. It's weird. Very strange. Weird times. But it is the first time we've been out all week. Okay. So we just had sugar or no sugar 
Here's another one, Steve. City or countryside? City or countryside. Now, I always find it amazing that some people prefer living in the big cities where it's noisy and polluted. I always find that very odd, to be honest. I like living in a place where there is no noise, where everything is quite slow and serene. So, yes, city or countryside. I I'm just wondering which one you would choose, Steve. I would. Well, I grew up in the country, so it's countryside for me. Uh, but of course, I do appreciate that a lot of people uh, prefer the buzz and the, the life of a city. I like to go to because I've got friends that live in Birmingham, which is our second biggest city in the UK. And I like to go and visit them occasionally uh, because you get to, uh, an experience, the buzz of living in a city where there's mm. lots of people bars nightclubs that sort of thing i think you i like to do a mixture but if you're asking me where i'd prefer to live it would be in the country which of course we do and you would sort of grew up in the country really yeah i mean it was a town but it wasn't a big town hmm. and i grew up definitely in the country uh so for me it's always going to be the country for me but uh i do like to go into towns uh for a bit of excitement from time to time yes if I had the choice, I would always choose the countryside. However, when I was a child, I was very lucky because I lived in the town, but I was on the outside of the town. So we were very near to all of the fields and the countryside and also the rivers. So I would also choose the countryside. And for many years, I always dreamt of living in a beautiful place uh, and now if we look out the window shall we have a look outside again because the weather outside is lovely today so there it is there is a live view looking outside you can see the pigeons there are some pigeons and you can see they might actually have a little fight look those pigeons look very angry <laughs> i think they're going to have a fight steve oh yes there we go fight 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 pigeon fight pigeon fight do you think they're uh, do you think they're do you think they're uh, trying to date Mr Duncan? I don't think so. I think there might be two males. I think they, they are two cocks. Look at that. Fighting away. You can tell spring's on the way. <laughs> Look, there is, there is actually a fight taking place on my live stream between two pigeons. <laughs> shocking. Quite shocking. So there is the view outside. Very nice day, though, I must admit. <laughs> Leaving the <laughs> pigeon fights aside <laughs> well that was a that was an interesting moment of time wasn't it so yes what about out there in youtube land what about out there yes suzika says countryside anna rita says countryside as well so it would appear that the countryside is preferable people prefer that particular thing they prefer it Mika says suburbs. Oh, that's an interesting word, isn't it, Steve? Yes. In the suburbs, the outskirts of the of a city. Mm. Uh, yes. So it's you're not living. A lot of people, of course, like to live in the suburbs because if they if they work in the city, uh, it's very busy, stressful. They don't necessarily want to live in the city or it's probably too expensive to live in the city. So they live a distance away from the town center which is the suburbs which is where most of the residential housing mm. uh, will be uh, and of course it will cost a bit less to live there and it will give you maybe a more peaceful life although you may have to commute uh, go by train or mm. drive Oof. into the center to do your job Ugh. I don't like we lived that. in the suburbs, didn't we, Mr. Duncan? Yes, I suppose so. I've always been very lucky because I've always lived sort of away from the busy town or the busy road or a place where there is a lot of traffic. So, yes, we've always been quite lucky. But now we live very far away from all of the noise and all of the traffic, especially at the moment, because everywhere is quiet, Steve. Everywhere at the moment is, is completely quiet i know uh yes it, it, it re really is a huge change um saturino asks about masks um 
saying, is, is it possible that you can pay £30 for a mask? Well, I think there's a, there's a big shortage of masks in this country. Mm. I, the, uh, you see other, many other countries where virtually everybody is wearing a mask, but not here. And mm. that's because we don't have enough of them. Mm. We haven't got enough masks, even for the medical people, even for the doctors and nurses, or, although I think that's, that's going to change in the next few days. Mm. Um, but the general public generally aren't, they're not really wearing masks because there aren't enough for them. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so you probably would pay a lot of money for them if you wanted one. Mm. Yes, a lot of people, some people prefer a city, some people prefer the countryside. And there's a programme that we like to watch called Escape to the Country. Uh, because a lot of people in the UK who live in the city dream of living in the countryside. And there is a programme that specifically caters for, for that market, those people. Uh, and they, they take a couple who are living uh, in the middle of a town or a city somewhere. And then they take them to see some houses uh, out in the countryside. And uh, they try to... Uh, to guess how much they cost and then maybe at the end of it they they choose to live there uh, so it's an interesting program we like watching that it's very popular in the uk to mm. to watch that program escape to the country yes uh, uh, of course living in the country is a very different uh, prospect to living in the towns you have to put up with uh, a lot of things that you wouldn't do in the town and we we had a bit of a joke uh, quite often to say that uh, that they ought to do a program called uh, Escape from the Country, back into the town, yes. <laughs> Escape to the City, because uh, there are challenges living in the countryside. Uh, and uh, in fact, we've got some neighbours near where we live. Don't worry, Mr Duncan, I'm not going to say where or who they are. And they, uh, they lived in London and uh, now they've come to live here in the countryside and they found it quite difficult i think to adapt to living here mm. uh, they couldn't get used to the fact that there weren't many lights not many street lights <laughs> and they got they they feel quite afraid at night because obviously in the city there's lights everywhere all the time but you come to live in the country it's dark at night mm. you can see the stars and that has made them feel a bit nervous about living here and they put up fences everywhere and they put up all these outside lights that come on at night as soon as a mouse walks by uh, because that's giving them more security. Uh, so, yes, there are challenges to living in the country. There are. <laughs> there are quite a few challenges living with you. So here's another one, Steve, another choice. <laughs> oh, I think Steve will like this one. Tom Cruise or George Clooney? Yes, I think this one is for the women and maybe maybe some men. <laughs> well, don't ask me then. Tom Cruise. Well, I remember you years ago. You, <laughs> you used to get really excited. You used to tell me, oh, my goodness, you, you have to see Risky Business with Tom <laughs> Cruise because, because he, he's, you know, he's in it and he's dancing around in, in his underpants. So really? I don't remember that. You told me about that. You insisted that I watched it four times. Risky Tom business. Cru Don't remember that, Mr. Duncan. Might Tom have been Top Gun. <laughs> George Clooney is is uh, is is more for the sort of. They're very different, aren't they, Tom Cruise? They are very different. He's got the boyish good looks. To uh, George Clooney has got the sort of uh, middle-aged sort of grey hair. Uh, that a lot of that a lot of women do like that, so they they they're appealing to very different people. I think um, that's quite clever that you've chosen those two, Mr. Duncan, because they would appeal to different types of pe uh, men or women. Uh, yes, because they're they're very different in character. Yes. Um, George Clooney has got this reputation for appealing to middle-aged women. Uh, I think. Uh, maybe I'm wrong I don't know but he's got a, a, a sort of a mature look to him hasn't yeah. he he's got that that look of a, a sort of a handsome mature male the word you're the looking for hair Steve the word you're looking for is rugged 
Rugged? I don't think he's... Is he rugged? I wouldn't could describe George Clooney as rugged. Have you seen him lately? He looks, well, maybe lately. He looks very rugged. In but fact, there, there, are, there are certain women, not being sexist here, who really do find older men with grey hair quite attractive. Yes, of course. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's a huge market. Uh, we've got somebody at work who has got very similar looks to George Clooney. Really? Uh, they call him the Silver Fox. Really? Uh, who, because who a, man with, a man with grey hair is often called a Silver Fox in this I, country. I'm going to be honest with you, Steve. I don't know anyone that you work with who looks like <laughs> George I don't think Cl you've ever met them. They're, they're in a different... Uh, they, they're not in my local team. Oh, I see. I've seen uh, a few of your work colleagues that look like George Formby, <laughs> but not George Clooney. Yeah, so uh, you know, grey hair in a man. Grey hair in a man is never a problem for a man, uh, whereas in a woman, it's quite often a problem, which is why women dye their hair anyway, because they don't, you know, perceive that as being attractive. <laughs> Although grey hair now is is actually some women now are dyeing their hair grey uh, because it's a fashionable colour. Yes, you do remember what we're doing, don't you, Steve? I've got sidetracked. Tom Fine. Cruise, or well, I said Tom Cruise, so that's my answer. Okay, so Steve is Tom Cruise. A lot of people out there in YouTube land are saying George Clooney. So it would appear that yes. a lot of the ladies like the older, the mature, the, the, the silver-haired, rugged man rather than the young, sort of immature-looking. Although, having said that, Tom Cruise, how old is Tom Cruise now? He must be, he must be nearly 60 Tom Cruise. He's, I think he's the same age as me. Really? Wow. Mm. That old? Uh, wow. Lewis says Tom Cruise, without a doubt. Uh, Robert Redford, says Christina. My goodness. So, yes, you see, I, th I would put Robert Redford in the same category as George mm. Clooney, that sort of mature man who, who exudes a sort of world-wise persona okay. uh, and uh, you trustworthy would look after you you wouldn't have any problems uh, if you were in a relationship with that person mm. Jamelia, uh, Jamelia, Colin Firth Jamelia likes Tom Cruise I like them both <laughs> says Serene <laughs> mm. but if you have to choose very greedy uh, 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 Piatina says I don't like either of them <laughs> uh, fair enough uh, Veronica says Tom Cruise bit of a mixture here Paul Newman yes you know what Steve it's funny that because I always get Paul Newman mixed up with Robert Redford I always think they are kind of the same type of actor so Paul Newman and Robert Redford I always kind of get those two mixed up because they have that same persona that same sort of image of being rugged and and tough but, but yes I don't know why but I always do Paul Newman Robert Redford I always I always confuse those two together of course other, you've got the, to be a certain age to yeah. to appreciate uh, and 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 actually talk about they've got to, to know those men you've got to be of a certain age because they were they were in their heyday in the in the sort of 60s and 70s weren't they really yeah well some of them the 50s that's right exactly so anybody that says that they they're attracted to uh, Paul Newman or Robert Redford must be at least our age or not if not older yes <laughs> I like You're giving your age away there by saying that you were attracted to them well I don't I don't think my I don't think my age is uh... <laughs> I think they're cool aren't they people like Tom Cruise Paul Newman Robert Redford they're cool yeah they're cool people Okay, uh, they would definitely uh, come in, under that category. What, I would say. What I love about Paul Newman is he actually moved into making his own pickled onions. I always find that amazing. He so did. He, yes, that's what I just said. <laughs> he <laughs> he he moved from being this hunky film star, Hollywood movie star, and then eventually he started to make his own pickled onions. He so did. He had a range of, uh, of food products. Yes, pickles. Pickles, I know. It had his picture on the front. How, how do you go from, from 
movie star hollywood movie star to making pickled onions i don't know maybe mr duncan because you're so famous now from being on youtube for 13 years maybe you ought to have your own range of pickles Yes. Uh, with your picture on the front, with yes. you with a baseball cap. Yes. Well, to, to, between you and me, Steve, I am always getting in a pickle. <laughs> oh, Mr. Duncan, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, I can't quite hear you. What about Yul Brynner? Says Ricardo. You look like Yul Brynner. Well, of course, I've played him on the stage. What, Yul Brynner? <laughs> well, the king and the king and I. Okay. Who Yul Brynner was, of course, famous for. Uh, if I shave my head off, yes, I can. I can do a, a very good uh, passing resemblance to your brother. If you shave your head off, <laughs> <laughs> is that what I said? I mean, shave shave off all my hair. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't shave your head off. I don't. I, I was, anyway, do you Clark know, Gable, blimey, you, you are showing your age. Clark Gable. Clark Gable. I thought that was part of a house. Sean Connery, now my sister. Ugh. My sister had a thing Ugh. for Sean Connery. Don't you say you have it. a thing for somebody, it means that you're attracted to them. Yes. Uh, and uh, he's definitely old enough to be uh, my sister's father. Yes. Uh, Actually, it's the grey beard, the grey hair. That, that, that's a definite rugged... I mean, he played uh, James Bond, so I mean, you've got the danger there... Uh, so yeah yeah um, my sister always had a thing for him yes men You're... with gray beards really yes okay she would she would love pirates uh, my... what <laughs> patchu says what is pickled onion that's that's come up in a very strange way on, on the on the chat there yes pickled onions yes. it's well, two separate it's, words well, when we pickle something it means we preserve it in vinegar so normally you preserve it in something like vinegar so something that preserves the freshness of a certain type of vegetable normally you will pickle or preserve vegetables and quite often you will put them in vinegar and then you will seal them inside some sort of container and then well later on when you want to eat a pickled onion maybe one night you are sitting watching television and you think mm, I would really like a pickled onion you can go into your fridge and there is a jar of pickled onions you can open the pickled onion jar and you can well I don't know how you get your pickled onions out of the jar but some people use a fork but I like to just pour them straight into my mouth because I like to drink the vinegar as well it's really nice well, pickled onions, I don't know how popular they are in other countries, but they've always been very popular, I know, when I was growing up. Uh, they're onions, but they're small onions. Normally an onion is about that big for cooking, but these are small onions like that, especially for pickling. And you peel the, the skin off the outside and put them into a jar of vinegar and they will keep for about a year like that. Wow. And you quite often have them with salad or cold meats that sort of thing uh, and we used to have a lot of them particularly at Christmas time uh, but yes it's a way of Mr Duncan a way of preserving things over the winter months mm. greetings from Mexico greetings actually almost a few moments ago we, we almost had another choice of one thing or another so Sean Connery or Roger Moore Playing, ah, now yes playing James Bond now I always loved Roger Moore playing James Bond I'm not a big fan of Sean Connery between you and me Sean Connery was not a very you know good actor I don't think he's a good actor to be honest I'm going to be honest I'm just, he just doesn't do it for me when well, uh, Sean Connery is like a like a sort of plank of wood however I like Roger Moore because he, he always brings a little bit of humor a little bit of a twinkle into the things he does although they said that he was a very wooden actor didn't they they hmm. used to say that uh, that uh, what's his name my, my mind's gone blank who the actor you were just talking about roger moore roger moore 
they used to criticise and say that his acting was very wooden. Yeah. But well, he did have a certain charm and sense of humour. Did you know that I have something in common with Roger Moore? Um, I don't know. We can both raise our eyebrows. Oh, right. Like this. Go on then. Give us a demonstration. Uh -huh. Ah, oh, 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 I can actually I can raise both of them. Boop, 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 Here we go. Boop, 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 but of course, boop, boop, saying Roger Moore or Sean Connery is very out of date now, isn't it? We, if you're talking about James Bond, you'd have to say Daniel Craig or <laughs> whoever came before him. I haven't seen any of the modern James Bond films. I just can't be bothered. Well, <sighs> who came before? Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig's the current James Bond. Isn't there, were, there was there were quite a few. There was Timothy Dalton. Yeah. So if we were going to be up to date, we would say Timothy Dalton or Daniel Craig. And then there was Pierce Brosnan. He, I don't think he did it for long. Oh no, he did. He did quite a yes, few, didn't he? Yes. Pierce Brosnan. For a long time, a lot of people thought he was the best james bond yeah so they did quite like pierce brosnan bit of a lightweight i always thought really pierce i brosnan. thought timothy dalton was the worst he didn't have much charm about him did he mm. uh saudi women apparently like george clooney because he's got an arabic face oh i see so that's you are right because he's got a dark complexion hasn't he i can imagine him playing a shake an, an Arab sheikh. I can just see him now. So, mm. yes, I think you're right there. Uh, Anthony Hopkins, says Palmyra. Yes. Never saw him as a as a sex symbol. But uh, I would imagine he does have his appeal with mm. the women. Yes. Oh, Beatrice likes pickled onions. Few people saying that they... Uh, Christina says onions leave the breath heavy. Yes, mm. uh, pickled onions do leave you with bad breath. Yes. Uh, for some time afterwards. Uh, Roger Moore says Beatrice. Uh, what's the meaning of a rugged man? A rugged man is somebody who looks like they've lived life. Mm. Um, they, they can do lots of physical manual work. Um, they've done the sort of jobs that uh, are very manly jobs. Yeah. Uh, I, I suppose you could say a rugged man, somebody like a lumberjack. <laughs> would say somebody who works outside, works in a building site. What about truck driver? Work a truck driver, that sort of thing. Somebody who's rugged. They look like they've lived life, and they've they, the, the, the lines on their face look like they've 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 led a, a hard life. And that they can take the knocks and they can look after you and protect you. Yeah. And then uh, that sort of thing. So rugged, somebody yeah. who's tough and yeah. uh, can take the knocks in life. Unlike yeah. you and I, Mr. Duncan. You, <laughs> we are I, not rugged. Yes, we, we are the opposite. of. We rugged. are the opposite of rugged. We are the opposite of rugged. Definitely. When I think of rugged, I think of people like Lee Marvin. Yes. Lee Marvin, a great actor wonderful actor he always played heavy gangsters or, or the baddie he was always good in those types of films and I suppose John Wayne as well John hi. Wayne rugged definitely hi there my name is John Wayne get off your horse and drink your milk Cap Devi 2 says that I look like Art Garfunkel <laughs> <laughs> I thought Art Garfunkel had lots of curly hair. Well, you, you, you've got half of his hair. But earlier, I'm sure Cap Devi too said that, that you look like. Um, I can't remember. Oh, good. my mind's going blank today, Mr. Duncan. Nothing's working. My brain's not working. Okay. Uh, who sung the the song Diana's Funeral on the piano? You mean Elton John? Elton John. Uh, you, they you, said that you look like Elton John and I look like Art Garfunkel. You actually couldn't remember the name Elton John. My brain's not working today, Mr. Duncan. One of the biggest singers and songwriters in the world and you couldn't remember his name. No. 
I always remember that do you, Steve do you remember that time when you were trying to remember Elvis Presley's name <laughs> and you couldn't remember his name but you kept saying you know who I mean you know the king he's the king I do have a problem with remembering names that's true I've always had a problem with that my mother's got the same problem uh, she used to uh, when my friends used to come round. she couldn't remember their names and, and she'd say the boy such and such uh, she just called them you know that boy that comes from <laughs> whatever the town was or she could remember half the name and I'm the same yes oh Jamila likes Piers Bron uh, Brosnan yes I actually thought he was a good James Bond he he had that I think he had quite a good sort of presence on screen, but I didn't like Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton seemed very weak and wet. He was. The other one was George Lazenby. He only played it once, didn't he? He only played James Bond once and that was it. Salwa is angry because uh, they are saying that we didn't. You drive me to anger because we didn't read your messages. I'm sure I read the one about uh, about you saying that um, People like George Clooney in Saudi because he looks like a Saudi person. I'm sure I read your message out. OK. Uh, but uh, the thing is, and I'll repeat this again, and I say it most weeks, we get so many messages. Yes. It's impossible to read all of them out. So we do apologise if we miss you. They move uh, so quickly. They're flicking so fast through here. And if we read out every one, we wouldn't, uh, we'd be on here all day. Hmm. We do appreciate. Please do send them in. If you if you send it a few times, I might notice it. But I'm sure I read one of your messages out. Noemi says you look like Patrick Stewart. Me. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Of course. Well, <laughs> make it so, <laughs> Mr. <Miss> Duncan. <laughs> yes, but you do have that. That's Engage. Yes, you do have that sort of, especially from the side. So if you turn around, Steve, give us your profile. Yes, you, you do have a sort of Patrick Stewart look. So I'm not just talking about your lack of hair, but also the shape of your face. It's very distinguished. Ooh. Thank you very much, Mr. Duncan. There. See, <laughs> you always say that I never say nice things about you, but there I just gave you a wonderful compliment. Well, I was once mistaken for royalty. <laughs> really? Because I, apparently I look a bit like the one queen? of the Queen's sons. I can't oh, remember I which one now. Is it uh, one of the one of the princes? Apparently I look a bit like him. And William. I once went somewhere. Actually, you know, you know, Prince William is starting to look like you. Uh, I can't remember which prince it is now, but somebody said somebody actually thought I was him once. It wasn't uh, Prince Edward. I think it might have been Edward. Edward it was Edward. Was, Edward was it. the younger one. Edward was was the, everyone used to think that Prince Edward was uh, was gay. Did they? But he isn't. Okay. Well, you heard it here first. And then you have Prince Andrew, who, well. The, the, the less said about Prince Andrew, the better. That's all I can say about that. We've got a question about English here, Mr. Duncan. Really? Uh, Francesca Bovey says, Mr. Duncan, I would like to know the difference between as long as and as far as. Well, as far normally means the, the thing that you have a grasp of knowing as far as. So as far as means the amount, the amount of knowledge or the amount of something that you know. And as long as, as long as normally refers to things that are happening over time. So as long as you need me, I will be here. So you can see that from that it is saying that a certain amount of time is passing. So for as long as you need me, I will be here with you however as far as normally means just something that may be thought or maybe an impression as far as i know based on all the knowledge that you have at that moment in time yes so the limit is as far as you know so the limit of what you know the limit of what you understand as far as i know as far as I understand so that is basically the limit 
So I hope that helps. A rugged man, a man who puts a rug on his head. No, Saturino. <laughs> that's a very funny joke, but no. <laughs> I like that. No, that's good. That that might be the funniest thing that's been said on today's live stream. Uh, I like John Wayne, says Lewis. Yes, he, I look quite. He was he was somebody that when you watched him, you felt he was almost a, like a calming influence. You almost you knew John Wayne was going to protect you. And he was the good guy and he was going to get get kill the bad guys and everything would be all right. Mm. So a film with John Wayne in, you always knew that you would be safe and the baddies would get their comeuppance. Yes. Comeuppance in well, the end. He did always play the good guy. He I don't always remember, played the good guy. I don't remember. I don't remember John Wayne ever playing the bad guy. I always remember John Wayne being the hero, a bit like Clint Eastwood. So Clint Eastwood, I've never seen Clint Eastwood play the baddie. He is always the 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 lone gunman riding around putting wrongs right. Yes, he's rugged. He's a rugged person. Certainly now. Uh, very rugged, but uh, tough, but fair at the mm. same time. He yeah. always plays those sort of characters. I do. Of all the actors that I like watching, I can virtually watch anything that has Clint Eastwood because I think he's a great actor and he has a wonderful screen presence. I think he's nearly 90. He's getting on a bit. I think he is. I think he is around 87 or 88. So he really is getting on in years. But yeah. Rose Red says that I look like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether that's a compliment or not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it is. <laughs> Patrick Stewart, yes. Good. Let's talk about Will Smith, says Ricardo. Oh. Yes, well, I do like Will Smith. Uh, wait there, Steve. I know what's going on there. What? Because I said yesterday that I don't like Will Smith. I'm not a fan of his his acting. Ah. Yes. So that's the reason. I know what you're you're trying to wind me up, aren't you? Yes. No, I like Will Smith. I've always liked him. It he was true. in that. Uh, he used, he started off in comedy in a comedy show, didn't he? Yes. Uh, was it the Be Prince of Bel Air or something like that? That's it was it. called the Fresh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And uh, I used to quite like that. And uh, but of course, he's he turned into a serious. He was very good in uh, Independence Day. I thought. <laughs> He played it. I, I, I do. I, I, I do like him as an actor. Not a fan. Well, yes, that's it. Yeah. Uni Karina says the same thing. I don't like Will Smith. Not a fan of Will Smith. He's, he never does it for me. Apparently from the side, I look like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> Depends which actor played, played Sherlock Holmes. Uh, can we talk about well, we can't really talk directly about. No. We're trying to get people and allow people to forget about what's happening in the world. We are here to cheer you up. We are like a couple of jesters. Do you remember in the in the old days, in the 15th century, when when the jester would perform for the royal family and he would have to amuse them that, well, I suppose we are a bit like that. Are we amusing? Do you find us funny? Do you find us entertaining? We'd like to. We'd like to think that we are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know somehow why I am. easing your pain through these uh, through okay. these troubled times. Oh, Christina Jackson likes Liam Neeson. All oh, right. However, Liam Neeson is one of those actors who, whenever I see a Liam Neeson film, I always feel as if I'm watching the same movie. You it, loved him in Star Wars, didn't you, Mr. Duncan? I, oh yes. Oh, he was <laughs> he was great in the Phantom Menace. It's the accent. I, I don't like the Scottish accent. Oh, uh, it, okay. It somehow it grated it grated me in uh, Star Wars for some reason. It just didn't seem to fit hmm. uh, with with the film. But that's my personal opinion. Uh, but Sean Connery, you see, his accent was fine. He was great when he was playing that. The best film I, I, I liked was Sean Connery, and it was when he was playing a submarine cap 
slipped in. I, he looked absolutely perfect for the part, the accent, the white beard, the grey beard, everything. I can't mm-hmm. remember, was it something Hunt for Red October or something? It was, exactly. I uh, can't believe I remember that. Amazing. He was brilliant in that film. Yes. Uh, Doesn't he play, a, I thought he played a Russian. Yes, I th- he, he could well have done, but he still, he still that's the thing. Uh, that could be it. The thing <laughs> with Sean Connery is, no matter what part he's playing, <laughs> That no matter what the... part he's playing, he, he can only do his Scottish accent. He cannot do any other accent. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve, but that's why he didn't sound Scottish. I don't think there are many... No, but I think he did. I think that was... I didn't realise, yes. I can't. didn't remember now that he was playing a Russian. Yes. But he sound, still sounded Scottish because no matter what part he ever plays in any film, he never changes his accent. OK. Are you, are you, are you sure about that? I'm sure. Benny Hill... No, Benny Hill wouldn't be... Well, some people might find him attractive. Yes. Well, a lot of ladies did. They used to chase him around in, in the parks in London all the time. At high speed. <laughs> Any other either oars, Mr Duncan? Either oars. Got them up your sleeve. <laughs> well, we had... We had the one that we made up. I suppose here's one, Steve. This is another one that I might like to do because, well, it basically involves food. I thought you were going to say Jaffa Cakes or Oreos. Well, we've done that already. (laughs) We know the answer to that. I like both. McDonald's or KFC? Well, at the moment, you can't go to either (laughs) because they're all shut. That's it. Good, Steve. That's it. Let's just... (laughs) <laughs> take people's minds off what's happening well imagine steve that they are still open <laughs> if they were still open i would probably go to oh that's a difficult one that's a difficult one because um oh <sighs> mcdonald's okay why did that take so long? Well, because because KFC is really just chicken and you can get chicken at McDonald's. So and McDonald's do a, a wider variety of food. So I'm going McDonald's if it's got to be one of them. I've, I've never seen anyone take so long to decide which type of junk food they like. <laughs> well, like... I, I wouldn't go to either of them usually, uh, but just occasionally... You've got to spoil yourself with a bit of junk food. Yes, and there's I, nothing so, like a nice, nice meaty burger. See, this is uh, see, this is where I disagree with you sometimes when you are criticising me for my eating habits because you sometimes I know you have secret meals and little things that you eat during the day, and what you forget is sometimes when you are emptying all of the litter or the rubbish out of your car. Sometimes I find wrappers and containers of things that are unhealthy. So I have a feeling that Steve sometimes goes to McDonald's and he has a beef burger, but he doesn't tell me. So there there he is over there criticising me for my Jaffa cakes. And, and I know for a fact that Steve often goes for a little sneaky beef burger or a sneaky McDonald's or maybe a Big Tasty. Uh, oh, that's my favourite, the Big Tasty. Yes. <gasps> oh, I love those. That's it, you see. Ah, but Mr Duncan, the difference is I will only have one of them. I won't eat ten of them no. in a row. Well. And I'll only do that maybe once every month or once every two months. I think that would kill you. Uh <laughs> Yes. So there is a bit of a difference. Yes. Yes. I don't uh, think you could eat 10 McDonald's. I think that would definitely end your life quite quickly. Uh, Christina says none of them because I eat well. Oh, I see. But I think, uh, yes, I, I mean, we do. Well, I do. But occasionally, um, I think your body craves junk food sometimes. And I think a bit of what you fancy is what we say here a bit of what you fancy so sometimes if your body is saying to you have a burger it's probably there's something in that burger some protein or some vitamins or something that your body probably wants so every now and then it's probably good to indulge yourself yeah 
and uh, and just enjoy a bit of junk food. Because yeah. I mean, I mean, we call it junk food, but I mean, a burger has got lots of protein in it. The meat has got iron in it. So I mean, there is nutrition in there. Mm. And the chicken, of course, is protein, and you do need protein in your diet. The problem arises is when you do this all too often. Mm. So it's, it's okay. And you can get vegetarian burgers now, mm. uh, which we used to love bean burgers, didn't we, Mr. Duncan? Well, at the moment, it, it, the big thing at the moment with fast food or junk food is these, these beef burgers that look like meat, but they're not. But I imagine they taste awful. I don't know why. I've never tried one. But in my mind... I imagine that they they taste quite awful. Eric says, "Why do you keep talking about food? Stop talking about food because you are making me hungry." Naomi says, "I prefer Burger King." Well, Mr. Duncan, we used to prefer Burger King, didn't we? Because when we first met, we used to eat a lot of junk food, and we would always go to Burger King because the the meat in their burgers, we thought, tasted nicer. Mm. And you could get a spicy bean burger from Burger King. Yes, we used to eat bean burgers. Bean burgers. But you can't get them anymore, I don't think. We used to love bean burgers. Mm. A bit of cheese on top. Well, you don't see Burger King around anymore, do you? It was, it was, no, you don't. It was, do you remember when we went to Malaysia years and years ago, Mr. Duncan? Yes. And we went into a McDonald's there. Yes. And the burgers were about a third of the size that they were in the UK. They were smaller. They were a lot smaller. And I think in America, they're even they're bigger than they are here. We found that quite interesting. Mm. <laughs> you were going to put something on the screen, Mr. I Duncan. was. We're talking about things you prefer, preferences. So here's another one. Lady Gaga... Or Madonna I know this one is a little odd so for those who are young maybe you will choose the first one or maybe if you are old like me and mr. Steve maybe you will choose the second one however some people might prefer a certain type of music so not just because of the year you were born but maybe the type of music that you like listening to Lady Gaga or Madonna Madonna, what about you, Steve? Well, I don't know many uh, songs that Lady Gaga has sung. OK. I've never really followed Lady Gaga, so I would have to say Madonna. Uh, but um, do you know any songs that Lady Gaga? I can't name a single one. I know, well, that's it. So because we don't know, uh, which, of course, is showing our age, then uh, I, I suspect that uh, you would also pick Madonna. Although I was, can't say I was ever a huge fan of Madonna, but uh, I did like some of her songs. I'm pretty sure at some point Lady Gaga may have done a James Bond theme. Did Both she? of them are delicious. Oh, you may be referring to KFC or McDonald's, not, not Lady Gaga or Madonna. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Belarusia. Oh Hello, Belarusia. Nice to see you here. Welcome back to my live chat on a Sunday. We are talking about all sorts of things during this strange time. Lady Gaga or Madonna? Belarusia says Madonna. Ooh. Lewis think... says Madonna because yes. of Eva Peron. Yes. Christina says neither. neither. Or neither, depending on how you want to pronounce that yes. word. Neither. But if I had to choose, I would choose Madonna. Well, I, of course, we grew up. Didn't we, Steve, with all of this music? We grew up with Madonna in the early 1980s. Yes. I well, remember when, I when Madonna, Madonna first appeared. She, she was quite shocking, very provocative. So a person who is provocative is a person who gets attention, but also the attention they get is sometimes negative because they are doing things that might create outrage or anger so madonna was one of those people who would create outrage or anger by being provocative i think lady gaga does the same sort of thing hmm yeah from russia says uh, that they are uh, mcdonald's and kfc and fast food restaurants are still open for takeaways oh 
Well, ours were still open for takeaways, but now they've been shut. Oh, okay. So we can't even go for a takeaway anymore uh, in the UK. Mm. Interestingly enough, I was uh, uh, listening to the uh, the news today about um, Sweden, and uh, they are one of the very few countries that have not uh, engaged in really tough measures for keeping people inside they haven't had a lockdown oh interesting they're, they're relying on people to uh to observe recommendations about social distancing and things like that but they're okay. not applying a an enforced lockdown uh so it'd be interesting to see um what happens there because in some countries now like italy i was reading social unrest is beginning to uh occur because being locked down for a long period of time is is going to cause many sort of problems. Mm. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what happens. Anyway, we don't want to talk about. So uh, no. let's go back to the live chat and do uh, either or. <laughs> yes. Apparently, Hamid Hamid Dreza says your debate are sexy and also provocative. Oh, I'm okay. not sure about I'm not sure about sexy. Sexy, really? Tony Bennett okay. says uh, Naomi Al Sur. I don't like this kind of music, Lady Gaga or Madonna. I like Tony Bennett. I like Tony Bennett. I think he's great, and I like singing some of his songs. He's a he's um, a ballad singer, a crooner you would say hmm. uh, but uh, he's still alive isn't he Tony Bennett I think he is he must be I think Tony Bennett must be in his 90s now he, he he's still performing really? he's actually still performing so uh, well done to him I can't uh, believe so so can you name any Tony Bennett songs uh, now you've put me on the spot now well I left my heart in San Francisco go on sing a little bit of it no, I'm not going to sing that because you might get you might get flagged, Mister Duncan. Well, just, just sing a little tiny bit. I please. left my heart in San Francisco, high on a hill. It called to me. <laughs> Is that enough? That's enough. <laughs> the loneliness of Paris. Uh, yes, and uh, but I mean, lots of people sung that song. I don't think that's his. The trouble with these types of singers um, is you don't know. It's very difficult to find out sometimes whether they were the first person to sing those songs or whether because a lot of a lot of these singers have often sung the same songs and they just re re release their own versions of them. Yes. Of course Tony Bennett I don't think wrote his own songs like a lot like 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 a lot of singers. No. Um uh somebody writes the song and and his interpretation is the important thing uh that comes through there. Uh but yeah uh tony bennett i do like him well he, oh da, ba, i know what you're going to say what tony bennett actually sung with lady gaga yes tom Aker said that wow how strange i think i've seen it on the internet <laughs> on the internet yes on your internets <laughs> yes i think so yeah uh <laughs> I, I, I can't remember what the song was now, but yes, they have sung a duet. So when two people sing together on a song, you would call it a duet. Um, so they would have, uh, they have done that, but I can't remember which song it is. Okay. Strangers in Paradise. Yes, that's from a film. Uh, Strangers in Paradise. That's a, that's a good Tony Bennett song. I can't think, can't remember how that goes. I find it amazing that we've gone through so many subjects. We are playing the or game or so I will give you a choice of two things. Here we go, Steve. The, here's a difficult one. Now, Steve doesn't know what I'm going to show because he he has no idea what nope, I'm doing. I don't <laughs> just like everyone else. So here it is, Steve. You will like this one. And I'm sure a lot of people out there will have fun with this. Frank Sinatra. Oh, I'm not a big fan of Frank Sinatra. I never thought that Frank Sinatra was a very good singer. I always thought Frank Sinatra was sort of talking. Talking, but so he's sort of just talking like this. 
I'm Frank Sinatra and I'm singing a song it's it's not really singing isn't that strange so I never really liked Frank Sinatra singing because it never sounded as if he was singing well it's Frank Sinatra Tony Bennett they're the sort of same sort of class of singer you would say and they've, mm. they've both sung each other's songs Tony Bennett of course being uh, more recent uh, well the thing with um, Frank Sinatra is uh, he was a much better singer when he was younger okay um, and of course he was very attractive um, Italian roots uh, so I think his appeal and he got quite a character on the stage so mm. I think his appeal he doesn't necessarily have to sing perfectly in tune yeah. like a lot of those styles that sort of crooner style you don't necessarily have to your voice doesn't have to be perfect yeah, that's it. perfectly in tune it's and more also, about your interpretation and the character yes and also having associations with the mafia helps as well <laughs> yes and of course he was a, he, he was a, he, who he used to hang around with sammy davis jr and uh, who was that other very tall crooner uh, as well he was always drunk a lot wasn't he dean martin dean martin uh, they were all sammy davis jr had a fantastic voice um, whereas Dean Martin's voice was very average, but he had great sex appeal, didn't he, to to his viewers? Uh, what do they call themselves? The Rat Pack. Yes. Well, Dean uh, Martin was also well known for his double act with another famous comedian. I wonder if you can name the comedian who Dean Martin was was closely associated with i wonder if anyone knows mm. ah. sinatra had a beautiful and sexy voice chris says christina well that's it he did have he had a certain his voice had a certain quality as he got older he used to sing a bit out of tune but when he was younger i mean it did he did have a powerful presence and uh, he was very attractive so yes he did yes. have a, he did have uh a lot of appeal apparently our our microbiologist friend asks can we play the game but this time mr steve or mr duncan so we are now being brought into this what? they are bringing us into this game oh we can't allow that mr duncan so is it is it mr duncan or mr steve i don't know so we have to choose which one mr duncan that's me by the way or or this guy Mr. Steve, which one? Andy Williams, says Olga. OK. Andy Williams. He was definitely one of my favourite male voice singers. Uh, and he grew up, he, he had all those wonderful shows. Uh, he had a show every week and it was all done live. Uh, he was, uh, there's lots of, of recordings of his shows, Andy Williams show. Uh, on the internet and when you look now you, I look in awe at those types of performers because they were performing live with an orchestra mm. in the studio okay now performers now very rarely do it that way they've got backing tracks and quite often they're miming so the the quality of singers from back in the 50s and the 60s and 70s were a lot higher than they are now I think because they were used to performing live all the time to and to orchestras which is is, is quite difficult to sing to an orchestra mm. so um, yeah fantastic uh, there's a duet there's one that I love uh, of uh, Andy Williams and it, they've got he's got um, Shirley Bassey who's one of my favorite all-time singers uh, on his show and they're doing a duet and it's mesmerizing to watch it it's live there's an orchestra there and they do it absolutely perfectly and i'm don't, not sure that many modern pop singers have got that level of talent or ability anymore to sing in the way that these uh, even like i mean like frank sinatra would have been technically very good at what he did because they all would sing live then mm. they wouldn't sing they wouldn't mime to a song in those days uh, Freddie Mercury, Michael Bublé. Yes, I like Michael Bublé as well. Oh, they're all coming out. Burt Bacharach. Dear, 
Of course, he sung. He wrote for many famous singers. I think. I think we've almost named every single singer that's ever lived. Now, yes. the comedian, by the way, who worked with Dean Martin, they were together for a while until they fell out. They had a big argument and they stopped talking to each other for a long oh. time. It was Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. A lot of people forget this, that Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin had quite a long association. They appeared together. They were almost like a double act, but they had a terrible falling out and they didn't speak to each other for many years. But yes, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, one of my all time favourite comedians. I know that some people don't like Jerry Lewis. They find him a very acquired taste. Not many people like his brand of humour. But I like I like Jerry Lewis. I think he's he's he he was very funny. Christina says Pavarotti. OK. Famous Italian tenor. Arguably one of the best tenor voices ever. Um, when you watch him, it's just mesmerizing. Hmm. His technique was just phenomenal. Yes. And of course, opera is the that's the height of ability of the human voice if you can that's it. Uh, i mean you, pop you, singing is difficult uh, all singing is difficult to a, to a degree but if you're an opera singer that's the peak of human ability as far as the voice goes anyway so you've got to always admire opera singers anyway steve we'll move along because uh, we will be coming to an end in a, in a moment because we've been on for one hour and seven minutes and i've got to go out Sorry. and finish chopping up that bush i mean two hours <laughs> even now i'm still getting the clock wrong <laughs> we've been on for two wow. hours it's half four two hours can you believe it so before we go though steve here's one Star Wars or Star Trek? Ooh. Are we talking the films or are we talking uh, the series? Well, there, I don't think there were any Star Trek or Star Wars TV shows. So when you, so yeah. Ooh, oh, wow, I wouldn't I like both of them, but probably oh, I don't know. Probably Star Wars. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm surprised. I thought you would have said Star Trek. Yes, I've changed my mind, Star Trek. Because there's more of it. Oh, OK. There's more of it. There's more of it to watch. Yes. That would keep me entertained on a desert island. See, now I'm in two minds about which one to like because I used to like Star Wars a lot. So when I was a child, I didn't like watching the original series of Star Trek. I didn't find it interesting. I thought it wasn't actually very good. However, as a child, I loved Star Wars. So I was around when Star Wars first appeared. So I was more of a fan of Star Trek. Sorry, Star Wars than Star Trek. It can get very confusing this. So but later in life, I started to like Star Trek more. And now I hate both of them. You hate both of them now. Oh, yes. the modern versions, you mean? Yes, because of all the modern versions of Star Wars and also Star Trek. It doesn't feel as if I'm watching the same programs or the same movies. So you might say that in the past I have loved both of these things equally at some point. However, now I don't really like both of them or either of them. I, I don't like either of them, to be honest. Well, a lot of a lot of people, of course, unless you like uh, science fiction, you're going to find it very difficult to choose between the two. Mm. Like Beatrice, for example, doesn't like that kind of movie. So science fiction, it ah. is uh, not everybody likes science fiction. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, Marcia is off. So goodbye to Marcia. See you yeah. next time. Yes. And, and so will we. we. We will also be off soon. Naomi says Star Trek is doing my isolation easier. So watching Star Trek is helping you to cope with isolation. Yes. Um, and of course, we're all watching a lot more television, aren't we, at the moment? Yeah, especially now that we have Disney Plus. A lot of people have signed up to watch as many Disney films as possible. So now we have a new streaming service. And of course, you have Netflix as well. I've noticed that on my videos, there are many, many Netflix commercials 
playing and I think Netflix are getting very desperate to try and stay they want to stay ahead of the game because there are lots of competition now so in the past mm -hmm. most people just watched Netflix but now there are many other streaming services that have come along however Palmyra says I'm not interested in Star Wars at all so some people don't like science fiction I like it and so does so does uh, him he exclusively likes it. yes whenever we say shall we watch a film I always say let I always look at the science fiction ones first yes uh, Christina Jackson says do you remember shadow 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 I think maybe do you do you mean UFO UFO to UFO yes well UFO was a TV show from many many years ago the late 1960s that was made so I'm not sure if that's the one that you are talking about but that is a very old science fiction program called UFO although it might have a have a different name in your country yes you see so it might have a, actually have a different name but yes serene says star trek i have never watched star wars incredible wow. that's incredible. incredible i find that amazing anyway steve i think it's time for us to go because we've been here for a very long time an hour sorry two hours and 10 minutes well you were late yes that's I, the punishment oh of course i was late wasn't i yes so i didn't come on until around about 25 past Yes, I was about 25 minutes late. However, we have been on for about two hours and 10 minutes. Yes. So Mr. Steve will now go into the kitchen. Christina will... says, sorry, Mr. Duncan, it, it was UFO. Oh, it she was. She was referring to. Oh, wow. How, how amazing. Yes. Now, that is a TV show that was around many, many years ago. And one of the stars of that show lives near us yes can you believe it can One you the... believe in fact yes she lives in the same village we live in yes we can actually walk past her house and wave to her yes are you going to say who no and which part she played no she's We're... retired actress now but she was in ufo yes and so, uh, it's quite exciting she lives in the same village we live in yes <laughs> i once i once made her hide around the corner until i'd gone because she didn't want to bump into me. Isn't the music that weird? of UFO. <laughs> says, I think uh, she thought I was one of the aliens from UFO. <laughs> That's the music to UFO. Fancy remembering that all those years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh i think it's time for steve to go and take his medicine you've gone, I've gone red oh the effort the effort you've gone purple <laughs> you've got a strange purple color anyway steve we'll catch you later catch you next week will do and, and uh, uh, i look forward to it and uh, are you going to have another busy week this week mr duncan I probably will because it looks as if this situation is not going to end soon. So, yes, I will probably be, I will be back tomorrow. I will be doing a live stream tomorrow. This is that a promise? Yes, of course it's a promise. It's a promise. I have nothing Mr. else Duncan to do. will be back tomorrow and you'll be able to watch him. Yes, and I have nothing else to do at the moment, so we are all in the same situation. You are Mr. Steve is also in the same situation. And so we are all looking for things to do. So I hope you can join me tomorrow. And thank you very much to Mr. Steve. I've got plenty to do in the garden. Uh, I think I've got enough to keep me going all summer. OK. Bye bye to everybody. Lovely to have your company today. And I hope that I've contributed something towards your English and uh, see you soon, Mr. Duncan, in the kitchen for a cup of tea and a tea cake. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Bye. <laughs> and there goes Mr. Steve. He is out of here and I will be going soon as well. I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. A long one. I'm just checking to see how long I was actually on for. Two hours and 21 minutes.
a very long time I was with you today I wanted to show you something before I leave because we were talking about snow earlier today and I wanted to show you some lovely shots that I filmed about three years ago so here is something that I want to show you because we were talking all about snow so I thought I would mention this right now and show you some lovely snow falling in England now this is not now so this wasn't filmed today so this is about maybe two years ago when we had a lot of snow falling here in England and there you can see some beautiful shots of snowfall in England and I know around the world many people today have been experiencing snow look at that isn't that beautiful sadly where I live there is no snow however I thought I would share these lovely images with you before I leave you today just to let you see what the snow looks like now I know that lots of people around the world have never seen snow before it might seem incredible but many people around the world have never experienced snow at all so before I leave you I will show you a few more shots a few more views of the snow landscape isn't that great and there you can see the snow falling in my garden lovely and there are lots of birds as well flying around unfortunately at the moment outside well at the moment we don't have any snow well certainly here we don't so this is what it looks like at the moment you can see at the moment the, can you see the the farmer is actually driving his tractor he is actually plowing the field so the farmer in the field in the distance is now preparing his field for the next crop. So already things are progressing, certainly as far as the farmers are concerned. So there it is, the view out the window. I hope you enjoyed the sunny view and also the snowy view as well. A lot of things certainly a lot of things we've talked about today we have talked about a lot of things i hope you've enjoyed today's lesson i hope you've also enjoyed the chat thank you very much to mr steve for your company and also thank you very much to you for joining me as well i will be popping up on your computer tomorrow so I will do a live stream tomorrow just to let you know that you are not alone and we are all sharing the same experience. I hope you will stay well and I really do hope you will stay happy as well. Thank you very much for your company. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Noemi. Don't forget to wash your hands. I will. And hopefully tomorrow I will have a shave as well. So I hope I will shave my face tomorrow <laughs> so I don't look too untidy. Thank you very much also to Rosa. Thank you, Sassy. Thank you very much for your company today. Thank you also to Berlin, Veronica. Thank you very much to Grace, Grace Chin. Also, uni Karina thank you very much Dorota hello Dorota thank you very much for watching me today Luis Mendez Nestor thank you very much for your company I hope you've enjoyed this extra long English addict live stream from the birthplace of the English language it's me Mr Duncan saying thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed today's live chat thank you for joining me today stay happy once again stay well don't forget you are not alone and of course until tomorrow ta-ta for now <laughs>